Hello, everybody. You're welcome again to our supply chain management lecture series. The module we are taking today is the logistics management information system. That is the LMIS. My name remains Dr. Ia Ezebasi, and I hope we have a wonderful time together. So by the end of the session, uh, you should be able to describe the purpose of the LMIS. You should be able to explain the logistic essential data items. You should be able to define with examples the three types of logistic records that we have. You should be able to describe also the relationship amongst the data found in the records, as well as explain the different elements of the LMIS forms used in Nigeria, and then describe how the six rights apply to the LMIS forms. And finally, explain the reporting system includes summary and feedback reporting. So before we go into anything, what is the definition of the LMIS, the Logistics Management Information System? Well, the logistic management information system can be said to be a system of reports and reports that is used to collect, organize, and present logistics data gathered across all levels of the system. Notice the words that I've emphasized, the records, the reports that are used to collect. You're not just putting them haphazardly, you're collecting them, going to organize them, and you should be able to present this logistics data that is gathered across all levels of the system. So why do we want to gather uh, data? Why do we need to have an LMIS? What is the importance? The purpose of the LMIS is to collect and organize and present logistics data gathered across all systems, all levels of the system in order to make an informed decision. All right, so all the data that you are going to collect should be collected in such a way that it gives an improvement in the management decisions that are taken to govern the logistics uh, system. So we find out that uh, most of the information system failure is that they do not collect the right data. They do not collect the right data that will support specific uh, discussion. So only information that supports specific discussions or specific decisions should be gathered, all right? The LMIS is different from the HMIS, that's the Health Management Information System, in that the HMIS collects you know, information about or data about patients, about their conditions, about the health services, while the LMIS collects information about commodities, health commodities. All right. So the how many LMIS levels do we have in Nigeria? Usually we have two levels of the supply chain logistics system for the HIV AIDS commodities, which is the central and the service delivery level that we talked about in the, the second uh, lecture, the first module, okay? And also uh, consumption and usage data, the SDP is collected regularly, uh, bi-monthly actually, and transmitted to the central warehouse for resupply decision. When the central level receives this summary information from the different SDP, they use it to decide how much to order for the whole country and how much to give each SDP in the country for continuous service. And the central level further transmits the performance information in the form of feedback to the different SDPs. So we find out that the LMIS is the engine that drives logistics activities in Nigeria. So remember this diagram? All right. So let me show you the two levels. You have the central warehouse and then the SDPs. Those are the two levels. All right. Ignore all these other things. These are the two main levels. So essential data items. When um, there's a minimum amount of data that should be collected, which are referred to as essential data items, okay? And these essential data items are related to the activities that occur to the supply half on half. All right. So the first data, essential data item we'll be looking at will be our stock on hand. 
Okay. So what kind of data is involved in stock on hand? These involve quantities of usable stock available at any level or at all levels of the system at a point in time. We should be able to have information about all the quantities of usable stock in your facility at any given time. And your stock on hand is the essential data item that gives that information. Second data item is the rate of consumption. You want to know how much uh, stock you are using per time you know, for a given or a, a precise amount of time. So the average the rate of consumption can be said to be the average quantity of commodities that is dispensed to user during a particular period. But remember that for medical lab scientists, it will be the average amount of commodities that you have used during a particular time to produce um, results. Then we also have losses and adjustments. And we can define losses as the quantity of health commodities that are removed from the distribution system, either due to losses or they have expired or they are damaged. While adjustments can be said to be a receipt or a receipt for issues of supplies from one facility to another or at the same level, all right? So for instance, um, if we have a facility at the teaching hospital and another one at the general hospital and pro probably the um, items or the commodities, laboratory commodities in the teaching hospital is finished, we could go to the general hospital and make a requisition from them. They are not above us, we are on the same level, but we need, we can't wait for central to send. So we could go and borrow. So what will happen at the general hospital is that they will have um, a kind of a record that shows that they have given out or transferred some of those kits from general hospital to teaching hospital. So there will be like a kind of negative adjustment. While teaching hospital will have a positive adjustment because they have received some kits from teach, uh, general hospital. So they have to record that as a positive adjustment. So let's look at records and reports, all right? So what are records? They are forms on which data are collected and they remain at the facility where they are recorded. So that is a record. While a report are forms on which data are moved from one level in a logistic system to, to another, whether it is at the same level or to a higher level or from a higher level to a lower level. So there are different types of um, different types of activities that are called to supplies in the facilities. Okay, and each of these activity has a record, you know, that supports it, that records documents that activity. So the first activity is that your supplies are stored in the inventory. Yes. So the type of record you will have for that will be your stock keeping records. You can also move your supplies between facilities. The kind of record that will take care of that activity is your transaction record. While there are supplies that are dispensed to user or that have been released to be used on the bench to produce results. So what kind of record do we have that for that? We have what is called the consumption records. So we have three types of records, three main types of stock keeping records, transaction records, and your consumption records. So what are stock keeping records? These are used to record information about products that are in storage. And examples include your bean card and your inventory control card. So this is a sample of the bean card. You can see the name of the facility. You can see the balance, losses and adjustments, what they receive from or shipped to, and all that batch number expiry dates. Then this is also an example of an inventory control card. So, having talked about stock keeping records, 
what should we know about stockkeeping records? We should know that stockkeeping records are of two kinds. We have your bean card. This bean card, I don't know if you've ever gone to a pharmacy before. Anything they issue to you, they are always recording on two different cards, okay? One of those cards is called the bean card. And this one bean card is kept per lot, batch or expiry date, all right? Lots, you know, th those reagents you received at the same time or are produced at the same time or had the same kind of expiry date. So you have one bean card that is kept per lot, batch or expiry date. And they are kept with the products on the storeroom shelf. That bean card doesn't leave that place. On the other hand, the inventory control cards have one commodity, not minding the lot, the batch, the expiry date, one commodity. Like if you have one for HIV, uh, HIV uh, kids, you have one for determined kids, you have one for the CD4 uh, kids, and all that. The different kind of tests have their own different kinds of uh, inventory control cards. So you generally have one per commodity, and this is usually kept in a ledger or book form in the product manager's office, all right? So the second type of records is the transaction records, and they are used to record information about the movement of stock from one storage facility to the other. They are proof of requisition, issue, and delivery, or delivery. And examples include your record for transferring and returning commodities, your um, CRRIFRF, which is the combined report requisition uh, information report form, and uh, the requisition and issue voucher. This is a shorter version of the CRRIF form. And this is a sample also of transferring and returning records for Nigeria. So we should know, what should we know about the transaction records? That there are many types of transaction records and the kind of information they contain will be the quantity of commodities that have been ordered or shipped, the authorization to receive or to ship the commodity, proof of received, signature and date of the, of the form. And uh, they usually do not carry essential data item and the requisition issue voucher is used for a pool system, while the issues voucher is used for a push system. All right. Having said that, we will then look at your consumption records, right? So consumption records um, have to do with um, records that are used to record the quantities of the products you used, used by the laboratory, uh, laboratorian or that is dispensed to users at an SDP when services are provided. And uh, examples include your daily activity registers, your log statistic sheets, your um, treatment or dispensing uh, register, all right? You remember that uh, we use issues data for the, the laboratory. So for the laboratory, you can find out that stock cards, so stock cards contain, contain issues about what is on ground, what has been given us. So the stock cards can be cons uh, considered as uh, consumption records as they record the issues to the bench. So in the lab, we could actually use stock cards as consumption records. So what are the examples of uh, the stock cards that we have? They include your ARV uh, daily consumption record, your daily usage record for HIV kids, your opportunistic infection drugs, daily consumption record, and your bean card for the victory. So this is an example also of a sample usage uh, record for HIV kids. So what should we know about consumption records? There are many consumption records and the consumption records must contain your dispensed user data, 
for uh, other health commodities or your issues data when you're talking about lab commodities. And this dispensed user data can only come from service delivery points, okay? So in keeping all this data, what is the relationship between the data that are found in the different records, all right? Your stock keeping records should be able to, you should be able to cross check it against your daily activity register in the SDP. They should marry because your stock keeping records shows you what you've given out. The daily activity re register shows you what you have used. So they should be able to cross, cross check against each other. Then your transaction uh, number on your uh, requisition uh, issues uh, report for a uh, uh, form should also match that on the inventory control card. And your accurate data from the inventory control card is transferred to forms and taken up the system. So just like we had uh, the six uh, rights, okay, six rights, logistic rights, we should also have six rights for the LMIS, all right? This is because the logistics managers use information and they need information that is qualitative, that has the right quality, that has the right quantity. You should not spend more to collect data than we spend on supplies and all that. So the six rights for uh, logistics can also be fit into the LMIS system. So let's look at the six rights for the LMIS systems. A well-functioning logistics system needs um, the right data, the right quantity, in the right quality, at the right time, to the right place, for the right cost. Okay? What do we mean by the right data? We don't need non-essential data items. We need the right kind of data items. We need specific data that can help us to make specific informed decision. So you need the right data. It must be complete. All the essential data must be included there. And we need it in the right quantity. All the data that is needed from all the health facilities should be there. And we need the right quality, which means that we don't want haphazardly filled forms and records. We want complete and accurate data. We need the data at the right time to be able to take the right action. They need to take action. Like, like, for instance, this data was needed like one month ago to be able to take a decision on how much should be sent to your facility, and you're sending it one month late. How do you want the um, managers to be able to take uh, a decision on what you're doing? So that data that we need should be sent at the right time in time enough to take decision. And then it should also be sent to the right place, send it to the place where decisions are made. All right? Then it should also be for the right cost. We do not expect that the money that you spend to collect data should be more than the money you spend on supplies. Imagine spending six million on, 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 on collecting data when your Supplies that you're collecting is not even more than 1 million. It doesn't make sense. So your data should be collected at the right cost. So what is the purpose of summary reporting? Why do we need to report in summary? We need to report in summary because we need to move all essential logistic data items for products for all specific facilities for a specific period which could be monthly, bi-monthly, half-yearly. For the HIV um, pipeline in Nigeria, we make bi-monthly reports. So this is a sample of the HIV test, C-R-R-I-R-F. Okay. Please, if you do have any questions about this, I know that this is a bit technical, but we still need to learn it. If you have questions about it, please and please write your questions in the comments. And also, if you understand what we are doing or you like what you're saying, 
please hit the subscribe button and give us a like. Thank you. So what are feedback reports? When you say feedback, feedback, I need feedback. I know I asked for a lot of feedback on you know, my videos. I'm still getting more feedback. So why do we need feedback? So what are feedbacks in the first place? Feedbacks are reports that present an analysis of data that is set up the system, or you have reports that are sent back to the lower personnel for their use, or reports that are exchanged among central partners. Remember that, um, HIV pipeline I, diagram I showed you. There was a bi-monthly report. There were feedback reports, you know, from uh, CMS, from the PSN technical working group. You had the proof of delivery from uh, the SDPs to the vendors and all that. You could see that they had to be at that flow of information and that flow of information of course in what in feedback uh, reports. So, what is the purpose of feedback results? Why do we need feedback? Feedback is important because it helps management or uh, managers' operational decision to monitor the performance of the system and manage the system. For instance, if a manager finds out that, oh, a particular SDP is always going through a stock out or they are not sending the uh, their data on time or the data they are sending is not uh, complete, they need to, uh, you know, have feedback so that they can take decisions on very important things. What are they going to do about the stock that is always occurring? Maybe they are going to increase, you know, the allocation to that particular SDP. Or if there's an SDP that is always wasting, having a lot of loss, a lot of, of wastage, they need to find out from the feedback report what is happening so that probably they have to increase the um, things or the, the, the things that are in the facilities to, you know, be able to take care of that. Or they can decrease the amount that is being sent to that facility, meaning that the facility cannot take care of that volume of lab uh, commodities. So also it helps to low, the lower level personnel to know how the system is working at their level, send feedback, you're doing well, not doing well, you need to increase this, you need to decrease that and all that. So it's also used to motivate them to improve performance and to indicate any problems in the reports sent or stock levels, okay? Everybody needs to be motivated. If you're doing well, tell me I'm doing well. If I'm not doing well, tell me you're trying, but you could do better. This is this and this and this and this and this is where we think you should uh, put in more efforts. So what would your information managers like to have in their feedback reports? They would like to have information like the stock situation by level, have there been any stockouts? Well, how timely is your report? How complete is your report? How accurate is your report? They will also want to have information on receipts and issues. They also have, want to have information on the facilities performance in terms of the health commodities dispensed. So the reporting system, we have reports that move up and down through a logistic system, like from the central warehouse to the SDPs, you know, from the SDPs back to the central uh, warehouse and all that. And the reporting system also provides decision makers at various levels information to make informed decisions. So having come to the end of this, I want to ask you if you have any question, remember not only to watch, but subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. This is my feedback. A lot of people are watching the videos, but they are not subscribing. Please and please subscribe. And if you have any questions, let me have them on the feedback chat. Thank you very much. Bye.